Alrighty guys, uh, here it is. The $14 airbrush. I even think I paid that with shipping. Um, I'll pull a link below in the description where I got it. It was on eBay. Uh, obviously made in China. This this must say that it's a gold color. It was a gold one or a red one. I, I, I didn't matter, so I just took the gold one. I figured my Harder and Stenbeck is uh, almost a reddish color. And um, first of all, let's take a look at it. All right. Oh, and a little instructions. Why not? They're actually not bad. They're all in English. Maintenance, all the parts. Not that I know I can get a part. You can probably buy the whole damn thing for the price of <laughs> one part for my Otter and Steinbeck. Uh, that's, let's put this in perspective. <clears throat> this is my uh, Mr. Hobby. My Pro Convoy Platinum. I love this thing. Right? I, uh, for some reason, during a cleaning, which is rare for me to lose something, I lost the little cap here. The cap, uh, let's put it here. The cap that protects the needle, you know. And uh, <laughs> I had to order another one. And uh, it was 11 bucks. This thing is 11 bucks, all right? So this whole airbrush was 14 all right? So that'll tell you where we're coming from. If this thing even does a quarter what I think it should do, it's probably worth keeping. If just a spray, you know, primers, for God's sakes. But uh, yeah, let's check it out anyway. Well, it looks like we got a little... Uh, eyedropper. We can always use one of those. Here's the wrench to take it apart. And this looks like, yeah, this is if you have a, a hose and you have to clamp the hose. This is it's useless to me because I, I just, I have the clothes with the uh, screw on the end. So that's kind of useless. Um, it's really light. It's obviously, it's all aluminum. Anodized with this color. Uh, now the cap fits nice. Good size cup. Let's see if the cup comes off. I don't know. Hey, it does. Some don't, some do. It does. Go figure. That's pretty good. Getting there to clean out a little better. It's got the cut open, so I guess this is the... Uh, is this adjustable? I think it might be, like my other one. This is. This is the stopper, so you don't have to pull back all the way. Yep, yep. That's actually a, a good feature that's on uh, the mid to higher end airbrushes. So that's pretty good. Here's the air pressure. I can see you can see the the valve working. All right, let's check out the front. Here's the protection cap, like I got for my other one. There's your needle. You know, I think it has a. Um, let's see what size needle it has. It doesn't say here. It's not even checked off. See in the, in the instructions, it says a two, three, a four, or a five. I don't even know what the heck I got. I have to look on the thing. I, it was a three or a four. It's, it was like right in the middle, it's, it's, which is why I grabbed it. You know, let's see if the rest of this nozzle comes apart. You know, it's got all the gaskets. The needle don't look that bad. That's the, where you put the wrench right there to pull that the needle head out. And I guess this comes apart for further cleaning. We'll, We'll see if it needs that much deep cleaning because we're just going to do a quick test. And I guess this comes off. Yeah, this comes off. So we can move the valve. Let's check out the back. Oh, well, it's got a nice gasket over here. Let's check the needle. See if it's straight. Always roll it. See if it's straight. No, uh, looks looks good to me. Let me see. Yep, looks all right. I think this comes out. Yep, this comes out for cleaning. This is just like my uh, my others, my uh, Procon. Same mechanism. I can even see it from here with the spring and the little arm that pushes back right there. So that's pretty good. And you can adjust the tension with this. But that's no big deal for me. It doesn't bother me too much. All right, let's put this back in. Fit in pretty nice. I'm not going to add stuff like this yet. I don't want to hit the camera, guys. The needle juice for the to make it you know perform better because I want to I'm we're gonna test it as it is, and if I end up liking the damn thing I'll I'll, uh, I'll get it all prepped you know from that, and that's it and that goes back in. All right, not bad. We're off to a good start anyway. It looks it looks all right. Now I'm gonna have to put one of these on. This is my quick release 
that I use, my quick valve. So let's go ahead and just sock that on so I can just put it into the hose I normally use. There we go. And as far back it goes, who knows? Depends on what we're going to be spraying. I won't use the cap because we're going to do a lot of back and forth. All right, here's the plan. We're going to try and do these. It's a lot. It's going to be a long video, but it's all different kinds of paint. I might not go through all of them. We'll, we'll see how the test is going. We'll know if it's horrendous. We'll know right away. If it's good, I might keep going, you know. But here's a couple of primers. Um, well, here's a primer from All Clad. Here's the Aqua Gloss. A lot of people have requested to see how that goes through because this stuff is thick. And it's tough to clean out. This is their normal clear coat. Uh, here's my uh, Stanarez uh, Badger primer. I figured go with gray. That's an acrylic primer. Here's my uh, Nazca Super Heavy. I figure we'll go heavy. I have the light and I have the heavy primer there. And then I got all clads. We'll go black chrome and a candy. We'll do two different kinds of all clad there. MRP. I've almost finished this bottle and I have another one. It's Subaru Blue. I did one of my Gundams in this. So with a little bit that's left, I figure we'll test it. It's a metallic. Here's an acrylic from Vallejo. This is the Mecca lineup, Deep Blue. Here's an Extreme Metal. We just did copper. I figure we'll try a metal. This is an enamel. Uh, here's a Gaia paint. This is my Evangelion, <clears throat> Evangelion color series. This is uh, dark purple. This is a lacquer. I figured Mr. Color Lacquer. This is a metallic GX. We'll go something unique. This nice looking pearl green. Uh, Tamiya flat yellow. A standard acrylic lacquer. This is their, uh, their acrylic version of it anyway. And this is a pure acrylic. This is Humbrol. Uh, French blue gloss. It kind of looks like this right here. I tried to get French blue for a friend who uh, asked me in the feed below and the questions uh, what they wanted to see. It was French blue from uh, uh, Model Master Acrylic. And I went to two stores. I didn't have it. And uh, it would have taken a little too long for me to get it from Amazon by the time I wanted this test done. So I was doing a, uh, one of these humbles anyway. <clears throat> so I figured I'll do the French blue. And that's the color he was interested in anyway. This cost me, uh, I think, $2 out of Scale Hobbyist in New Hampshire. Good place. And that's it. That's the run of it. We'll start with a color, I'm guessing, or maybe a primer. And uh, at the booth, what I'm going to do is we'll clean out the gun with an acrylic, and we'll clean out the gun on camera with a lacquer to see that. But after that, I'm not going to clean out every color. We'll just do the painting and see how it airbrushes. Because once, air, once I clean it once, we'll see how the cleaning goes. I'm going to do the standard uh, through the cup and backwash it and we'll move on and at the end I'll pull out and see how dirty the needle is and whatnot you know a again it's 14 bucks if it's even halfway decent it's worth it all right guys all right I'll pick one of these first we'll love it up to the booth and we'll see how this stuff looks now before I head over in case you guys don't stay till the end I'm gonna do this twice I'll do this on my next video too when I do one of these other tests um, but I wanted you guys to know that this metal varnish, which I tested last, is phenomenal. The stuff dried hard as diamonds. I've been scratching this thing, uh, masking tape. I, I've done I've done it all, and it's just it's look at it. It's unbelievable. It dried even nicer than in the video. It even leveled out even further. You just can't scratch it. The stuff is fantastic. Look, this is uh, my spaz. All right. The spaz, I marked it so I the metal varnish, so I know the metal varnish is on it, and I can't mark this up, you know. So the stuff is great. I just want to let you guys know. Look how great it looks. This is on the the humble, right? The humble spray can. Look at the job it did on this. I mean, it's just on. It's it's awesome. It's durable. I mean, you're not gonna beat it up, but at least you know if you're gonna do a, a Gundam or something, you can handle it and pose it, and nothing's really gonna flake off. I'm gonna try it as a general. Uh, gloss coat too on just a basic paint job and see what that is But I want to let you guys know I'll also highlight this in the next video Let you guys know how good that stuff ended up working. All right, let me pick one of these I'll meet you at the booth and we'll check out this cheap airbrush All right guys to start this off. I want to check it uh, if we can get some nice close-up lines, you know I know it's not the finest airbrush for that, but um, it's my bottle my custom bottle of uh, black base from uh, all clad. I just took a little squeeze, put some drops in it, and uh, I don't know what to expect, but uh, let's see what we can do for some fine lines. That's not bad. 
Let's uh, lower the air way down. Let's see what we get. Yes, yeah, so I can go in much closer now with the air turned way down and just pull your finger in a little bit. Trigger's kind of uncomfortable. My initials are C. Let's get a little closer. It's not bad. I mean, you can you can appreciate a kit with this easily. You know? Let's see if we can get some dots. That's how close we can get. I'm gonna try and get real close. That's probably as good as I'm gonna get. It's I think it's a three or a four nozzle, I gotta check it. I don't think it's a two. You can see the splat a little bit when you come out. But it's a good way to test it. You can come in close though. Look how close we can get. As long as you're moving too, you should have a problem. But that's a good pre-shade. It is splattering out a bit. It's not keeping the paint close, which is a sign of a below average nozzle. You know. But you turn it way down, I think you guys could probably get some decent lines. The trigger is just so uncomfortable for me. But um, anyway, on to the paint test. I wanted to see how it would do with this first. And uh, it's not too bad. I mean, it's 14 friggin' dollars. I mean, what can we expect? But it gets the job done if you're gonna appreciate anyway. You know? All right then, on to the test. All right guys, uh, we're at the booth. I started with uh, all clad black primer with micro filler. Uh, this is pretty thin, so I just put it straight in the cup. Uh, got a boatload of spoons here. Let's uh, blow it off first. Let's see what we get. Uh, not bad so far. Went on pretty nice. Looks like it might have been a smaller needle than I thought it was. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to pull up the eBay app on my phone and see which one it is I bought. So I seem to have to pull it further out to get better coverage. But that, again, it's, I don't think that's the airbrush's fault. I think it's a smaller needle. I could pull it way back, it seems. Let's see. But anyway, it, it's, it's working. Can't really tell if it's gloss. Uh, well, this is a flat uh, primer, so well, it went on. It looks like it doesn't atomize the paint, you know, like one of my good ones. But then again, when this dries, we'll know because primer dries completely different, you know, a, a dull dry. But that's the first experiment. Um, I'll clean this one. I won't show this cleaning on camera yet. Uh, I'll let it build up a little bit. So we'll go on to the next color and keep testing. All right, uh, next up another primer, heavy, super heavy. This is Gaia Notes uh, Nazca lineup. And we'll do some more primer. I filled it up, uh, thinned it with uh, standard lacquer thinner because it was pretty thick in here. And then once I put it in the cup, I blended a little bit of leveling thinner on it. Goes on well so far. It's not squeaky or noisy or anything. The, the trigger's uncomfortable. It's too tall for me. I had the air turned up just over 20, about 22. It seemed to it seemed to like it a little heavy on the uh, air pressure. That I noticed. 
All right, let's go in heavy and see what we get. Super heavy. I think it means the color, and I think it's sandable. So this this can go on thick. It's made to uh, cover up imperfections. But yeah, that's it. It went on. Like I said, this airbrush, if it's even decent, it's great to have just to put primers on and uh, heavy clear coats and leave everything else. Yeah, you know, we'll let this dry, obviously, to see the result. But uh, it seems to it seems to airbrush pretty good. So far, so good. All right. We got a lot to go, so let's move on to the next color. All right, guys, we're going to move on. Black Chrome All Clad, one of my favorites. Let's see what that does. I'm going to skip a couple of the other primers because I figured that I've done two primers, gray and black. So we'll move on to some of these different colored paints. Um, straight out of the bottle in here. And my black spoon. Let's see what we get. I'm going to lower the air pressure on this. I forgot it. I forgot the uh, all clad chromes. They like the air pressure pretty low. It's going on pretty good so far. Not as good as the other airbrush. I can tell it doesn't atomize the paint as well. There you go. I'm not going to put any more. I mean, I can go heavy on one side. Leave the other side all right. We could try that. But it seems uh, it seems to have not the same quality to it. It's hard to explain on this, you know. And I'll, I'll hold it up next to one of my other spoons. If you can see it in the uh, video, that'd be good. Um, I don't know what else I have here. I have some spoons that are just not worth I keep. See, they have specs on them, and I keep them because they have imperfections. So let's see. Yeah, I should stop there, but it's still too, it's too much black versus chrome for me. But I want to test and see how it goes on heavy, even though this paint should not go on heavy. Try it. Yeah, it doesn't behave the same at all. It's hard to explain, but I'll show you in the video. But anyway, it went on. Not great, but it worked. We'll see how it dries. Let me look up at the other one. That's not too bad. I'm not crazy about it, but we'll see. We'll move on to the next color and see you in a second. All right, guys, on to one of my favorites, AK Extreme Metal. This is copper. Uh, I recall this only this only has to go over regular plastic so there's no primer. If I have any trouble I do have some primered spoons here. Let's see what we get. I can turn the air pressure back up one second guys. I turned it down for the all clad. Alright. I admit the, the 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 button is hard to use. It's it's really tall. See, I want you. It's hard. I even got specs on it. It's hard to ease up on it. It is getting the job done. You know. Let's flash dry this. dries really fast. It's already dulling out. See it? Yeah, it, it really likes this paint. Flash dry it again. It's pretty strong in the air, so pull it back. This stuff dries really even. You know, it's 
So that's good. I did like this one. This one went on pretty good. Still not the same. It just doesn't go on the same. It's hard to explain. But the the nozzles in these hundred dollar airbrushes, two hundred dollar airbrushes, they, they, they atomize the air in a special way. It's all high quality machining, and these are just pushing air through a, a needle. It, it's it's not the same science, but it does get the job done. You know, to a point. Um, on to the next color. All right, guys, moving on. We are at, at All Clad Candy Golden Yellow. This one just came in. You see it? I have some silver spoons prepped. I have all kinds of foam and silver here, you know. These are ones that are from failed uh, tests that I keep aside for stuff like this. But let's see how it does a clear. You know, it likes to clear. It, this is going on well, but the trigger is really hard to get used to. It's so tall. If I can somehow cut this trigger and move it down. <clears throat> it does really like this uh, clear. This seems to be going on the best so far. Let me dry this off a little bit so I can put a nice heavy layer on this. It's a good looking yellow too. I'm flash drying it now. All right, let's go in for a heavier coat here. We'll move across a little slower. Keep in mind, this isn't the best base. You know, these are like failed experimental spoons that I put aside. I, I just grabbed one of them, you know, just in case. It, it looks great though. This, it really went on good for this, which tells me it's going to airbrush the uh, the gloss coats on well too. The aqua gloss and the, the standard gloss paints, you know. This ran on really well, look at that. I have no complaint on this one, you know. So, um, that's a good, that's a good sign. All right, guys, let me grab another color. All right, guys, uh, going on to the extreme other end here with an acrylic, with a humble. This is French blue. This is a white prime spoon. I had to thin that stuff. It's, uh, that's thick as mud, man. I had to thin it down quite a bit. But let's see what we get. getting splattering. See it? I didn't even touch it that time. I, I didn't even have the needle pushed in and it just splattered. <laughs> now this stuff you gotta flash dry so let's do that. I, I think the trigger sticks. I should have put the needle juice on it and oiled it up. But again, I want to test it straight out of the box, you know? All right, let's flash dry this.
you go. It went on pretty good. It behaved a little... Oops, sorry guys. Behaved a little wonky because of the trigger getting stuck. But it ended up painting it on all right. All right. We'll let that dry and we'll move on to the next color. All right, guys, next up, MRP, Mr. Paint from Slovakia. This is Subaru Blue Metallic. Oh, this is a prime spoon. It's white. Uh, this is straight out of the bottle. Oh, man, the, the trigger keeps sticking on me. This stuff airbrushes really well. It's a, it's a great lineup of paint. I got some tests coming up with that soon. So you guys want to look out for it. it. Dries fast too. I'm flash drying it. Look at that, huh? Not bad. Not bad. Still, uh, <laughs> it's still a little tricky to use, but, you know, let all these paints dry, and then I gotta clean it and see how that goes, too. But, uh, let me clean this out, and we'll move on to the next color. All right, guys, next up, Mr. Color, or I should say Mr. Metallic, the GX, this is 211, uh, yellow-green. I'm gonna put this on a, uh, Surface Prime spoon. I use that for my spoons. Let's see what we get. The bare brush seems to be struggling with metallics. I've noticed that. That's why I think the clear seemed to come out so well so far of all of them, you know? Well, so far this one is airbrushing well. I thinned the hell out of it. Uh, I do that with my Mr. Colors anyway. They go on great, very thin. So it does like this. It does like its paint extremely thin, which is a sign of a not a great nozzle. But what can you expect? Yeah, it, it really, it, it likes this paint. I used uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner, which is my favorite. Yeah, that's it. It really liked it. This was no problem with this one. It seems to be uh, picky in uh, what it likes to paint. But again, we'll go over it. And if you can pick out two or three, you know, that it paints well, it's probably worth your while. Um, all right, let's grab another color. All right, guys, uh, Vallejo, Mecca, color. This is deep blue. I got a spoon, um, white primer. Uh, I thinned it quite a bit. As I'm noticing, this thing seems to like solvents better than it does acrylics. For whatever reason, who knows? All right, this is, uh, these are tricky, so you gotta flash dry these light coats just like my uh, acrylic video says so let's do that it dries really fast it is hard to control ah look at the splattering because I can't control this this um, the trigger at all the button whatever you call the damn thing Let's flash dry this. Maybe we can uh, fix our mistakes. You know, this stuff looks like it's going an awful until the final coat hits, and that looks great. So.
My hand seems to be dragging on the needle that moves back and forth. I don't like that. That could be affecting what I'm doing. I just realized it. However, the color is starting to come in. Try to get far away with the air. You don't want to blow this uh, paint. I got it pretty thin. It'll end up pushing it around the spoon. But it's getting pretty close to the color. As I said, usually the final coat on this stuff. But my hand is dragging on this as it moves back. See my, my finger hits? You can see how dirty my hand is because I'll show you that later on on the cleaning what I did. But see, I, I can't. I'm trying to move my hand away from it. It's not comfortable at all. Now I'm gonna call that it. I just can't take it with my fingers. It, it's starting. It's starting to get to me actually. Anyway, it, it you know, hey, not bad. It, it, it put it on. It put the color on. Look at that. Beautiful color. But uh, all right, move on to the next color. All right, guys, next up is Tamiya Flat Yellow XF3. We'll go with the uh, white prime spoon with this one. Let's see what we got. Tamiya airbrush, uh, airbrushes really well, so let's see if this paint is forgiven. First coat, nice and light. This isn't a traditional lacquer, it's a, I mean, a traditional acrylic. It's a lacquer-based acrylic. Like the MRP. Uh, SMS also. I'm gonna flash dry this. It's a flat yellow, so this isn't, we're not gonna get a high gloss on this at all. Very good mecha color. Wow, it's tough using the trigger on this thing. It does like this paint so far. It does like this one. I'm going to flash dry it and then give it its final coat. You can see where it's dragging my finger, but it could be the size of my hand. Can you guys see it? When I pull it back, this is dragging. I guess, let's see if we can adjust this. Try that. That's yeah, a little better. Doesn't help the uncomfortable trigger. To me, airbrushes really well. It generally doesn't run. It has a nice pigment. It, it, it's a good paint. It's a great paint. Uh, we'll call that done. Came out good. Very good. All right. I think I got one color left, and then we got to do some clear, and then we're done. All right. Last of the colors is the Gaia Evangelion Purple uh, Primed White Spoon. needs a really forgiven paint because uh, it seems to just spit the paint out so to speak you know and there it is it just spit it it's this damn trigger I end up pulling it at the wrong time just flash dry this I could probably cover up the mistakes this is a dark opaque color but still Man. You really have to make sure you start off of your project with this airbrush and then come into play and then make sure you pass it before you let up on the trigger.
Let's try this quick and then we'll get another coat. Looks like it's done already. Came out good. And the leveling thinner should level this thing right off. Looks good. No problems. Gets the job done, I guess, is uh, best I can say. Anyway, uh, I got a couple of uh, gloss coats, and then the aqua gloss and a clear, and then we'll head back to the bench. All right, guys, uh, aqua gloss over my SMS bronze. Love this stuff, but uh, let's see how this works. It seems to like the clear, so this stuff is straight out of the bottle. I think I gotta let more out of here. Right, let's turn up. I'm gonna turn up the air pressure quite a bit here, guys. This is uh, this is on the thick side, if I recall. There we go. Yeah, it likes the clears. It does like the clears. If you guys plan on using Aqua Gloss a lot. A dedicated brush just for that might be the thing to go because this stuff is thick and it's a special kind of cleaning. You gotta use hot, hot water. Um, that's it. I'm done. It went on. Look at that. So we'll let that dry. And I got one more. We're gonna use a, a lacquer clear coat. I'll pick a color to put that over. And then uh, I'll show you how to clean it. And then we'll head back to the bench. All right, guys, the last test of this airbrush will be uh, gloss clear coat and it says it says oops, try and get it to the light kill it on you guys apply all clad gloss clear coat over matte paints to provide an ultra smooth service for decals I mean you can use it for anything that's a, that's a recommendation but I went and got uh, really matte colored spoons that I have this is humble one of my humble acrylics and it is a, it's as dead matte as you can get can you see it not a ounce of reflection on this thing so let's test that first i think this paint is so flat it would absorb anything that's why i'm going to test it It's starting to work. Look at that. The airbrush loves clears. I know that for a fact now. Yeah, it worked good. So, for the hell of it, let's try it over this orange. This is Mission Orange. A great color. Yeah, now this was more of a smooth matte. The other one had that really dead matte look to it. So it, it's covering this much faster. And that's why I chose these two. So it does, oh, sorry guys. It does like the gloss, it does like the clears. Um, all right, I'm gonna pause the camera and I'm gonna show you how I clean it back at the bench right now. All right, guys, here's how I've been cleaning it. Um, I've been getting this acetone. Oops. Sorry, guys. Putting some in. Blasting some out. Now, cover the front with the rag. Cover the cup with the rag because it splashes out. And that's giving you a reverse flow. Dump out the rest. I keep a bucket with uh, paper towels in it right below my desk, and then it should blow. It should blow through it pretty clean. And if you want, 
You can go in with a couple of drops again. And even at this time, you can just blow it into the rag. And what happens is, it'll actually blow back into the nozzle and clean it out. And uh, I will also get a brush and go in here, you know. And that's if I'm gonna um, do a lot of painting and switching colors. And go in with your rag right here, that's it. It seems to clean up pretty good. I got a lot of paint on it. That's, this has gone on for quite a few hours, this test. And uh, it, seemed to leak, it seemed to be pretty good. It held up. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to paint, using my other airbrush, a couple of the same paints that gave me trouble in this, to show you the difference in the other airbrush, with the same color, same spoon, same mixture. All right? Meet me back at the booth, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, guys, first up on the testing of the same paints in my uh, standby airbrush here, my uh, GSI Procon. Uh, got the, hold on, the MRP Blue Subaru Metallic. All right? Seems a little high on the pressure here. There we go. All right, here we go. Watch the difference. You guys will see the difference in uh, in the end when I show you the other spoon. It just it just comes out so fine. The other one, like I said, it doesn't have an, a nice atomization process in the nozzle. It's just a just a needle that blows the paint by it. You know, it's, it's hard to explain. Unless you watch, uh, you know, an instructional video on uh, how an airbrush works, a good airbrush, anyway. All right, let's flash dry this a little bit. This is from the same pack of spoons I grab all of them from. These are all I, I thin these. I mean, I prime these during the week. See, some have gray, and uh, I just keep them so they're ready for testing. And that's where all the spoons come from. And next one is my black ones for my metal paint demos. I'll flash dry this again. Sorry for such a long video, guys, but uh, testing this stuff in depth seems to just takes a while but this is way more comfortable can you see how low the the, the, uh, the button is the trigger look at that the other one it's way up here and I, I couldn't put my hand back now it could be a good airbrush and maybe you guys have a different everybody has different hand sizes obviously so it still could be a good airbrush for you my hand it just didn't fit right we'll go over that at the end you know but I know something was wrong when it had trouble spraying this. And this paint just goes on wonderful. I, oh, sorry guys. I just love this paint. I mean, that is Subaru Blue. Look at that. All right, I didn't do anything fancy. I mean, I'm, I'm a little sloppy here. I'm just throwing it on. I didn't really flash dry it. You know, this is to show you the difference between, you know, a $100 airbrush and a $10 one, obviously. Anyway, we'll let that dry. I'm going to do one more paint, one that I think came out awful, and then uh, in this gun, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, guys. Another one I wanted to redo is this acrylic humbrel, French blue, white spoon. In the uh, GSI, Mr. Hobby, Procon, uh, Platinum. All right, let's try this out. Oh, might be too much here on this baby. Hold on. Now this we're gonna go with the uh, the flash technique. So we're gonna dry it off quick. This stuff dries really fast anyway, you know.
this is a pretty forgiving uh, acrylic, and this is a pure acrylic. This is this is your heavy, you know, water-based, nothing special, pure acrylic. We're just going to go in here for the final shot. There you go. French blue. All right. So that's the end of that. And now we're going to wrap this thing up. So these are back to back to show you this airbrush using the same paint, same spoons, same mixture. And uh, I'm going to show you the difference at the bench so you'll know why I went ahead and did this for you guys. All right. We'll see you back at the bench. All right, guys. Conclusion time. Let's go through some of this. Uh, some good, some bad. Um, might be more good than bad. And, again, you got to take price into account. Now, when you saw at the beginning, we tried some lines. And um, not too bad. If you get your steady hand going, and you go real slow, get the air pressure just right, you can get a good line. Uh, but average, I was getting a little bit of misting on the lines um, but still I, I, it's good if you want to do some pre-shading um, again I got to see what the needle size is um, I'll put it in the description because I'll put a link where I bought the thing and it should have what it is it's a three or a four I believe so it's a little big for doing fine lines but it, it kind of got the job done and this wasn't even a special paint I just threw the uh, the all, the uh, all clad black gloss base I even put like a nice black that you would pre-shade with anyway you know a flat black but that was to start. Um, I, I, I don't like the trigger. It's just too tall. And I, I'm used to keep my finger either even my pull or this. I, I keep my finger close to this and I like to pull back because I've gotten... Hold on. The Procon, can you see how low... Look how low the trigger is. And look at this thing. It's just too much. So I've gotten used to... Can you see where I, my hand is? Yep, that's everything. I'm pushing in and I'm pulling back with no effort. I It's it's this airbrush's fault. It's not this one. i just gotten used to this. And you just can't do it with this one. And I, I, I just, My hand just fell into that. So you have to go on tall. And it's so tall. You know, it's it's the law of, of leverage. You know, you just it, it's easy to pull back because it's just too damn tall. If they had this thing short... Like this, I bet you, if we can get this thing shortened somehow. My brother owns a machine shop. We should cut this thing down. I bet you it would turn this into a, a you know, a 7 out of 10 airbrush. Just for that alone. And that's what I meant by... And my hand kept grabbing in this thing. See this thing moving? And it kept rubbing my hand. Um, I don't have that problem with my hotter and steam back at all. It's just it's just shaped differently and it doesn't it doesn't seem to drag my fingers at all. You know, so that's a problem too. I figured out as I was doing it, I just, you know, I'll just twist this thing so my hand isn't near it, and that solved that. But it's it never really solved this problem for me. You know, I'll take off this because it doesn't come with this, so you guys don't see that. This is my quick release valve. So this is how it comes, and uh, but you know, aesthetics aside, for how I held it. It performed pretty good. Um, it likes the primers. This is all clads black primer and filler. Look at how perfect it laid this stuff down. It was pre-thinned. Uh, you, you can see it in the jar. It just went from the that to the airbrush to the hair on a blank spoon. You know, plastic, bare plastic. It, it phenomenal. It's smooth. It's fantastic. The Nazca. The Nazca. Gaia notes super heavy. Another great lay down. Look at that. This has got a little more grip to it than the all clad. It's a little smoother, but this has a little bit of grip to it, which is good to hold your next paint. This would be a good one to hold an acrylic. But this went on beautiful too. You know, so as I said, if you're just putting primer with it, use it just as your primer gun. You know, even if you get a half a year's use, if this thing dies. You know, it's 14 bucks. <laughs> it's, two, it's two McDonald's uh, Mac, uh, Big Mac meals, if I'm not mistaken. Not that I have them that often. But that's good. Look at that. All right? Now, 
all clad black chrome. Check that out. Look at that. Not bad. Now let me show it to the original. I pulled one out over here. Here we go. Now, it looks and the camera might look better, but this looks way better. It, you don't see any speckling at all. You see some kind of a speckling in this, but I put see if I can buff it a little bit. I put it on pretty light. You know, I went really light, which is uh it, it wasn't behaving well. You can kind of see a sheen that was unnatural. And I think it comes down to the, the nozzle atomization. But this is through my good airbrush. And this is through that. Still quite acceptable. It's still acceptable. Look at that. Not bad, huh? Not bad. All right. Aqua Gloss Clear. I put this over my SMS, the bronze that I did recently, and look at that. It's perfect. It went down. There's no ripples. It, it's beautiful. It's tough. There's, it, you know, because it's it's straight from the bottle. It doesn't change the formula of that, but it laid it out beautifully. It likes the clears, and it likes the primers, it seemed. Look at... Another bonus, because this stuff is pretty thick, and it really freezes up your gun. you got to put hot water fast through your gun once you're done and you can't go more than a few minutes airbrushing this stuff that's how thick it gets but you got to clean it out fast but it handled it it did handle it now this is the gloss clear coat now this is meant to go over and smooth out your mats because it says it right here apply over mats for a smooth decal surface so i got two kinds of mat i got one that was really rough mat and that's my uh my humble mats are really they're a pure I mean, they're a dead matte. So even though this isn't shiny, it's smooth. It's hard to explain, you know, over the... It's hard to explain to this camera, but it's smooth. It was a dead flat before this. You could probably see it in the video uh, earlier where I sprayed it. Whereas this was a matte orange, and look at the shine it got. So it did behave as it's supposed to. This is a smooth. This is now smooth. I could put a decal on this. But uh, it put it down as a gloss. Look at it. Beautiful. So... It did that good, too. It did both kinds of clears perfectly. All right, now I'm going to get into uh, where you've seen where I airbrushed twice using the same paint, the same spoon, but the other gun. All right, check this out. For some reason, it did not like this MRP. Can you see it? And I'm not sure what in God's name this is. I got other spoons, bare spoons, spoons with different primer on it all different look at this i couldn't figure out what the heck was going on so i decided at the end i'm going to put the same paint through the gun through my other gun same mixture same spoon so you guys can see what i mean it's something to do with the uh the way it mixes the paint in the nozzle and it's just not a not a good uh, nozzle hold on a second guys i gotta reach for something here all right i did this whole kit recently of uh, a, this is my Subaru based um, Gundam. Now you can see I, I used uh, all this brand on this. This is their luminous yellow and this is this blue. Same color out of the bottle. You don't mix it at all. You put it in the gun, you know. And for some reason, through this gun, I got these speckle spots like I dipped this thing in olive oil. And this is, uh, this is me first attempting. I, I didn't even. Uh, I was just practicing, we'll say, with, with this one. And look how beautiful it, it came out. So I took the same paint, the same jar that I put in this. I grabbed the spoons from the same bin, put it in this airbrush. You know, sorry, I just did it, and look at it. It's, <laughs> the difference is day and night. So it did not like this paint for whatever reason. I don't know what this is and what it was doing to it. It's the same spoon. I grabbed it from the same bin. So this is the same paint in my airbrush. Now this has a great nozzle. Uh, it, you can't see it here. You'd really have to see it from the company's website. Um, but uh, it, it uses a, a, an atomization process that really, really uh, does the paint well before it comes out. It really atomizes the, the air beautifully. This, I think, just shoots it. It's just shooting the air through 
and that's all you're doing and you're releasing more there's, there's no little nozzles like this has that atomizes the air and the paint together that's why i think it's something's going on and this has a heavy if you can see it see it right there it has a heavy metallic to it too which somehow affected the flow so it did not like this at all i mean i knew something was up when i took the same paint and stuck it in my airbrush and the result is right there you know i literally just it's a pour. You can see the bottle's a mess because I'm pouring straight out of the bottle. You know, you don't even mix it. So that that was that. So that was a fail. Um, technically the first fail. All right. Now, next, it didn't like this acrylic because uh, Vallejo is very picky and it's finicky. And you got to go really slow. And I did my process with this, but it's still it's it's as if you just took it in your mouth and spit it out in the spoon you know because it's not really atomizing the paint it's just blowing it out and whatever paint is more forgiving it does well because it's more the paint is just more forgiving this stuff isn't you got to be really good to do Vallejo now just so you know can you see how it ran and pulled and that's using my slow process of doing acrylics this lineup is all I have from Vallejo is uh, the Mecca because I have their other stuff and I'm not crazy about it but just so you know this is how this stuff comes out, all right? These are, all three of these are Mecca colors. Turquoise, this is their magenta, this is their fluorescent green. And look at the difference. See how you got the pooling and the running? It didn't like this. And you really need a good airbrush, personally, to do these uh, more difficult paints because it really makes your job easier. And, um, but this is me just practicing because I'm getting ready to do a, a big test on the, on the Mecca paint lineup. And I really like it. I'm not a Vallejo fan, but I like this paint. It goes on good. Not through this airbrush. If I had this airbrush and not my other one, I would hate this paint, you know? But I, I don't. I got a good airbrush, and there's the difference. It takes difficult paints. makes them easier. This, just, it's going to be your difficult paint. You Maybe great, great patience might help, too. But that's what they should look like. All right? All right, let's move on. Mr. Hobby, Mr. Metallic, GX211. This is uh, uh, yellow-green. This went on great. I, this literally, this stuff, I would convert everything to this paint. Uh, th this is the great, that's why I have more of this paint than anything else. This stuff, you could be a fool with a blindfold on, and this stuff will lay down beautiful. I mean, this just went on, it just went on great. It didn't run, it, it, it just went on great. It, it, it's a very th I thinned it out really well. Maybe it likes a really thin paint, but I thinned everything pretty good. But it likes this. But it's you can't judge it on this because this <laughs> this stuff airbrush is great. Matter of fact, you get this cheap airbrush and you buy just these paints and the primers. You guys got it made. But look at that. It, it went on perfect. Look at it. It's as smooth as silk. It just went on beautifully. So that's a win. Now, it likes clears. This is, I just got this in, golden yellow candy from All Clad. Look at that. Is that great? It went on smooth as silk. Look at it. Look. Come on. That's great. Oh, man. I, that is, that's just wonderful. That came out awesome. Nothing to say. I mean, that's just perfect. All right. All Clad. I mean, uh. Gaia Notes. This is Gaia's Evangelion color series. This is dark purple. It's basically, you know, the a lacquer paint. Thinned it 50-50. I even think I went uh, 50 paint 60 thinner. Oh, let me show you what I used. Hold on, guys. I use this for everything. Use your leveling thinner. This is the greatest stuff on the planet. I'm halfway. i got to order some now because it's hard to get. It runs out fast. This is the greatest thinner in the world. You even use it to thin your tomatoes also any of your acrylic lacquers just use this to thin it but that's what i put in this perfect results look at it smooth look at that matches perfectly look at that that's one of the best match to, to cap to spoon i've ever had so that's another win tamia very forgiving paint just as forgiving as mr color all right, look at this. Flat yellow. Is that great? Now I thin this with the leveling thinner. 50-50 about. Look at it. Perfect. It perfect. It loves it. So that went on great too. If you buy Mr. 
Tamiya and some of the old clads, the brush is probably fine for you. These other difficult acrylics, I'm not so sure. But there's enough right there to warrant purchase already. Um, copper, AK Extreme Metal. Great stuff. I love this stuff. It's the stuff I painted my Gatlin gun with. Look at that. And there it is. Look at that. It went on perfect. It, it liked it. This is an enamel, by the way. And so that went on well. Not a thick uh, metallic to it, which is I, I think maybe what threw, threw me for a loop over here with that one. So that was good. Another winner. All right, this acrylic gave me trouble. Now, I like Humbrol's acrylics. All right, this gave me trouble. It ran... Anything with the, the difficult acrylics. Now let me show you one of the, uh, their spoons. Hold on one second, guys. I want to show you the how much better this stuff goes on. All right. There you go. This is my Humbrol. This is Humbrol uh, Matte Orange. It goes on. I mean, it's one of the better acrylics I've ever had. A pure acrylic. This is pure acrylic like water you you can thin it with water there's not many like that and um it just it gave me trouble it it, it it's something with these hard to do acrylics the, the the mecca and this one now just so you know hold on a second guys here it is right here <laughs> that's when i went back you guys saw me go back and paint it in the video and i went back and i redid two colors that's the other one. The, other, the first one was the blue uh, mister right there. That's the redone. And this is the redo. Same bottle. Same mixture in the cup. Same spoon from the same bin. Let me show you the bin. I showed it in the video. I just grabbed them from these. These are all pre-primed. pre, pre uh, primed. See, I got gray ones and white ones in there. I used uh, Mr. Surfacer primer on both. There's some Timia on both. Either one. And look at that. Look at it. This is that one that I just did with this gun. That's with this gun, and that's with this one. So it doesn't like the difficult... I shouldn't say difficult, but some of these pure acrylics are tough. you really got to take your time. But even doing my process, it still ran because it didn't atomize the paint properly. You really need a good airbrush. You know, this is it. I mean, look at that. That's as pure a paint job as you can get. And that's from this $1.99 acrylic stuff using this gun. So that's why I wanted to show you the results of the same paint in a different gun. That's why I did that. So this is with that one, and this is with mine. Look at the runs. No runs at all. So if you want to airbrush, my conclusion, if you want to airbrush everything, like I do, I, air, I love this. I love paint. And I want to paint all kinds of paint in the market, everything. You got to go and spend the 100 bucks. This is about a buck ten on this brush. At a minimum, uh, this changed my modeling life. This airbrush, and I use—I even use the adjuster air valve in the front. I don't use this as much in the back because I use the trigger itself. It cleans easy. You just open the lid up a little bit. It blows back and cleans everything out for you. Uh, about every two weeks, I'll go in and pull the needle out and clean it by hand. And um, for this one, um, we broke it apart in the beginning. It cleaned up pre pretty easily, you know. But I'm going into I'm going into depth. If you want to paint all the colors like I do, all the acrylics, the enamels, you know, all the, the Vallejos, if you stay away from certain acrylics that are troublesome, I mean, these are hard to find. Uh, the only two places in America sell these where I buy them, and these you can get everywhere. But I'm not a I'm not a Vallejo fan, but I am a fan of this paint. So if you think of it that way. You remove a couple of these. You've got a good airbrush here. This damn thing got the job done. It's not great, but it's going to get the job done. You, you, I just went through them all. You, it's going to get the job done. All right? So, that's my conclusion. It was 14 bucks for God's sakes. You can't go wrong. Particularly if you don't even have an airbrush and you want to get started. You know, you might as well do this. Get the right paints. Personally, I go Mr. Hobby. You know, these Gaia. You know, and uh, some of the all clads and Tamiya. Th those are going to get you through no matter what. They go on perfect. These AKs go on perfect for metal colors. The uh, And the all clads, great. You get almost foolproof, you know. 
But if you want to spray everything like me, you're going to have to go in and put the 15 bucks towards this thing and get that. This has free shipping, by the way, too, at uh, SprayGunner.com. That's where I got it. But uh, not bad. It's, it's, it's not bad. It's not a bad airbrush. It, it did the job. For the ones that it went out well, it went out well. So um, that's my review. It is not that bad. If you like the certain paint that it worked well with, then you got yourself an airbrush for 15 bucks. Had free shipping on, on, it, no, on top of it, guys. I think it was free shipping. You'll see in the link below. I got it on eBay, and it came out of New Jersey. So I got the damn thing in two days because I live in New England. But uh, there you go. That's the gamut. I only had two failures, three failures. This, uh, this Humbrel, this uh, Mecca, and uh, this Mr. Paint. And uh, I should have did the Mecca on mine, but at least I had the spoons um, from them that I did to show you how good that paint actually does go on. And that was it. So... And um, I was just making sure it wasn't the paint, how I had it mixed, and the spoons. That's why I went and did the same, everything the same. I just switched guns, and the results were superior. So it, it ended up being the gun on those paints. I mean, I guess you could work at it and figure it out, you know, to get it down. But uh, don't worry about it. Um, I spent way too much time on this video for a $15 airbrush. I'm sure you guys skipped around. I would, too. But uh, it was, I, I had to go into depth because I really wanted to break this down. I want to show, because all these paints act differently, and now you know how, how different they'll act. And if you get a good airbrush that can handle everything, that's why uh, I have these, because I like to handle, I like to paint everything, you know. But that's my conclusion. Anyway, guys, like the video, please. Subscribe if you haven't already. I got tons more to go. I got in some new cans. Check this out. I got new cans of... Uh, uh, metalizers in the spray can i got the sealer in the spray can which is rare um i got two new colors of all clad copper and hot metal carbon check that out we'll be testing those soon too and i gotta do my ink airbrushing test soon and uh, we got some brand new uh uh extreme metals i got the new chrome i showed that in the last video so these are going to be coming up soon too i might do that this week that video in a few days all right guys thank you for watching i'm sorry it was a long video but we had to go in depth and um, this way you guys can choose if you want to drop the 100 bucks on this baby or 15 on this and only spray certain paints. The choice is yours. All right, guys. You guys have a great day. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. And I'll talk to you in a few days.